Hi everyone. Before we start this morning, uh, we're going to begin with a short commercial break. I'm excited to share something new with you today. Many of us at St Mark's are really missing the opportunity to worship together from the youngest to the wisest. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be offering a fresh opportunity to come together for worship. During this second lockdown, in addition to providing fresh content on our YouTube channel from 9am on Sundays, we're inviting the whole church to gather together at 4pm for whole church worship together. This will last about 20 minutes and begins next Sunday, the 15th of November. The first two weeks we'll utilise our YouTube channel. On the 29th of November, we're hoping to use Zoom. Together was born out of a discussion on how we, the staff team, could improve our online worship services for the next phase of lockdown 2020. We learned a great deal from phase one and we're keen to listen carefully to feedback and to learn from our experiences. But we were also keen to use this season as an opportunity to further the vision that has been emerging at St Mark's around the importance and value of intergenerational whole church worship. We're passionate about intergenerational worship, not simply because we want to celebrate families, celebrate different learning styles and explore fresh ways of doing and being church, but because we also have a strong sense of conviction that Christian worship is at its best when it joyfully demonstrates unity in diversity. In other words, if the gospel is about God reconciling, bringing together all things to himself, a community that demonstrates togetherness in every aspect of its being, reflects the essence of God's mission to the world. Hi everyone, welcome to St Mark's. My name is Matt and I'm the vicar here. Our hope is that during our time together, you will know the love of God through Jesus. Today is Remembrance Sunday and this week we'll mark Remembrance Day on Wednesday. You may wish to mark this occasion by lighting a candle and uh, having a minute's silence as we remember those who have lost their lives in war from 1914 onwards. Jesus is the light of the world, and light always overcomes the darkness. You may wish to press pause on the video now. Take a moment to pray for peace and for justice in our broken world. Let's draw our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 1 to 15. These are the terms of the covenant the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites in Moab, in addition to the covenant he had made with them at Horeb. Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, your eyes have seen all that the Lord did in Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his officials and to all his land. With your own eyes you saw those great trials. 
those signs and great wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you a mind that understands, or eyes that see, or ears that hear. Yet the Lord says, During the forty years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. I did this so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reach this place, Sihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, came out to fight against us, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. All of you are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God, your leaders and chief men, your elders and officials and all the other men of Israel, together with your children and your wives and the foreigners living in your camps who chop your wood and carry your water. You are standing here in order to enter into a covenant with the Lord your God, a covenant the Lord is making with you this day and sealing with an oath to confirm you this day as his people, that he may be your God as he promised you and as he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I am making this covenant with its oath not only with you who are standing here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. How is your memory? Like me, do you write yourselves little notes or to-do lists? At just 10 years old, Nishkal Narayanam claimed his first Guinness World Record for the most random objects memorised. In case you want to beat it, he memorised 225 random objects in 12 minutes. Today is Remembrance Sunday, held in the United Kingdom as a day to remember the contribution of British and Commonwealth military and civilian servicemen and women in the two world wars and later conflicts. As disciples of Jesus, when we share bread and wine, we remember that Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. Earlier on in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses urges the people to remember God's faithfulness. God provided his people with shoes, with clothes, with fresh food each day. And here we are in chapter 29, and Moses brings the word of the Lord. Yet the Lord says, During the forty years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. In chapter 29, we are reminded again, He who has called us will be faithful. He who was promised will be true. I love that verse in Hebrews 10, 23 that says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Yet of equal importance, in verse 9 Moses says, Carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. If God's people are to be successful in all they undertake, the call to be faithful is as much for them, for us, as it is an undeniable part of God's character. Moses is saying, as God is faithful, so too must we be faithful. If you look in many Bibles or in a commentary, you'll see that people refer to Deuteronomy 29 as the renewal of the covenant. So the natural question for us to ask is, 
what do we mean by covenant? In the United Kingdom, Remembrance Sunday is held on the second Sunday in November, which is the Sunday nearest to the 11th, Armistice Day, the anniversary of the end of hostilities in the First World War. Hostilities formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in accordance with the armistice signed by the representatives of Germany and the Allies earlier that morning. However, World War I officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles on the 28th of June 1919. Although the armistice, signed on the 11th of November 1918, ended the actual fighting, it took six months of negotiations at the Paris Peace Conference to conclude the peace treaty. Treaty is another word for agreement or covenant. Covenant speaks of promise and commitment. A promise to engage in specific behaviour or a commitment to stop acting in a certain way. Back to today's reading, what was the covenant that Moses was talking about? That God would be their God and they would be God's people. God's covenant goes way beyond an armistice, an ending of hostilities. God's covenant goes way beyond a peace treaty. In the Bible, covenant is all about a relationship with God. In Exodus 24 verse 7, we read that Moses took the covenant scroll and read it out loud for all the people to hear. And they responded... Well, Moses, that's okay for you, but actually, it's not quite the right time for us. You see, we're going through a tough time with the kids. My boss hates me. Finance is, well, a bit tight at the moment. What? They didn't say that at all. When Moses took the covenant scroll and read it out loud for the people to hear, they responded, everything that the Lord has said we will do and we will obey. In establishing the covenant with God, the whole community pledged to commit themselves to God. The whole community pledged to commit themselves to God. I'm inspired by the following words that President John F. Kennedy shared during his address before the 18th General Assembly of the United Nations on the 20th of September, 1963. Peace does not rest in charters and covenants alone. It lies in the hearts and minds of all people. No act, no pact, no treaty, no organisation can hope to preserve it without the support and the wholehearted commitment of all people. So let us not rest all our hopes on parchment and on paper. Let us strive to build peace, a desire for peace, a willingness to work for peace in the hearts and minds of all our people. In establishing the covenant with God, the whole community pledged to commit themselves to God. Just as a peace treaty requires the wholehearted commitment of everyone concerned, so our covenant with God requires that we play an active part, not just lip service. What do we read in the book of James chapter 2? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, 
if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Yes, all we do is in response to God's great love. Yes, it is by grace we are saved through faith. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. We can have a relationship with God both now and forever because Jesus came to earth. He lived among us. He gave his life for us and God raised him back to life. But being a disciple of Christ is about far more than saying a one-off prayer or signing on the dotted line. Being a disciple of Christ is about a daily relationship with God. With the enabling of the Holy Spirit, we seek to love God with all that we are, to love our neighbour as ourselves and to share with others the wonderful news of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Schindler's List is one of the most powerful movies of all time. It tells the compelling story of German businessman Oskar Schindler who goes to Nazi-occupied Poland looking for economic prosperity and leaves as a saviour of more than 1,100 Jews. A charming and sly entrepreneur, Schindler bribes and befriends the Nazi authorities to gain control of a factory in Krakow, which he staffs with Jewish slave labourers. Very soon, he is making a fortune. Whilst Schindler's empire is being built, however, the film portrays the murderous fate of millions of innocent Jews. Schindler begins to take note of these terrible atrocities and he begins to change. The self-centred, money-hungry entrepreneur gives up his worldly goals and turns his efforts to save the lives of many Jews. The story reaches a dramatic crescendo with Schindler preparing to flee. As a Nazi party member and self-described profiteer of slave labour, he must escape the advancing Soviet army. Although SS guards have been ordered to liquidate the Jews in Brinlitz, Schindler persuades them to return to their families as men, not murderers. Schindler packs his car in the night and bids farewell to his workers. They give him a letter signed by every worker in case he's captured, explaining that he is not a criminal to them. He's also presented with a ring secretly made from a worker's gold dental bridge and engraved with some words from Jewish teaching. He who saves one life saves the world entire. Clinging to Itzhak Stern, his factory manager, Schindler breaks down. Why did we keep the car? We could have got more people. We could have got 10 more people. Look at this pin. It's gold. It could have given me two more people, even one more person. His manager, Stern, turns to him and says, there will be generations because of what you did. You did so much. In fact, today there are believed to be 7,000 plus descendants of Schindler's Jews. I wonder what our legacy will be. How will you be remembered?
when Moses took the covenant scroll and read it out loud for the people to hear, they responded, everything that the Lord has said, we will do and we will obey. Quoting Deuteronomy and Leviticus, Jesus boils it down to two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. If we do that, we'll see the fulfilment of the original covenant of blessing between God and Abraham. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And so today is an opportunity for us to renew our covenant with God. God's covenant that goes way beyond an armistice, an ending of hostilities. God's covenant with us that, that goes way beyond a peace treaty. For Christians, for disciples, followers of Christ, covenant is all about our relationship with God and indeed with each other. So what will your legacy be? How will you and I be remembered? I'm going to conclude our time together with a blessing. Then after that, I'd really encourage you to spend time with God, responding afresh or perhaps for the first time to his call on your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.